Hello everybody, it's the War Hipster here, coming at you with another Cursed City Contrast Plus painting tutorial, and today we are painting the Kosagi Night Guard. These are really cool ogre orc models. I think they're ogres that are now dead and look green. Anyway, I'm not too I'm not too brushed up on the lore. Anyway, these are really cool models, and we're going to be painting them today. So, what we're going to do is we're going to put one of them to one side just for now, so because I can't paint. I've only got two hands, so I can only paint one at a time. And uh, without further ado, we're going to get into painting them. Now, they've been primed in grey seers. We want them to be nice and cold. And the first colour we're going to be using is Flesh Terror's Red. And we're going to be using this all over their cloaks. So this outer bit here. What we're going to do, that's a little too much Flesh Terror's Red on the brush. What we're going to do is we just want to start painting this all over... these areas. And with that done, don't worry if it looks a little too vibrant right now, we are going to fix that. But what we are going to do is going to move on because we are going to paint in his trousers and you can see them just under here. And the colour we're going to be using for this is Militarum Green. Again, don't worry if this is kind of dark enough for your tastes. We are going to fix it. I'm going to do something very, very clever. Or at least I think it's very, very clever. <laughs> and so with that done on both our Kosagi Night Guard, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some wildwood and we're going to use this to paint in his boots, his belt, and the cuffs of his uniform. Now again, don't worry if this is too bright for your taste or even in fact too vibrant. We are going to be doing something in just a moment to kind of blend it all together. So we're just using this wildwood like this. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to darken down all three of the colours. And the colour we're going to make is a roughly four parts contrast medium to one part black Templar mix. And we're going to use this, as I say, over the red, the brown and the green. And what it's going to do is it's going to initially look like it's really, really just far too dark. But we, what will happen is it will dry a little bit brighter. However, you do want to be a little bit careful here, because if you do use too much, you are basically just going to make it black. But thankfully, the contrast medium keeps it wet enough that you can just keep moving it around. Just like this. And so with that black Templar and contrast medium mix applied all over those details, you should have some beautifully shaded miniatures, miniatures now. They look <laughs> absolutely stunning. I'm so very pleased. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some Black Templar up next, just on its own. We're going to use this to paint in all of the kind of decorative features like these on their jackets.
Then with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use two colours, Agaros Dunes and Wildwood. I'm going to use those to paint in all of the fur. So we've got some around the hats, or helmets I should say. We've got some around their necks, going around onto the back as well. So, using these two colours, what we're going to do first is we're going to take this Agaros Dunes. I'm going to demonstrate this on the back here. What we want to do is you just want to slap this Agaros Dunes all over these fur areas. Just like that. Then what we do is we wash the brush and then we grab some wildwood. And then what we do is we add this wildwood in amongst the Agaros dunes just like that, leaving a bit of Agaros dune sewing and having a little bit of wildwood in there as well, just like that. So you get these kind of two different tones. I'll demonstrate this one more time. We'll do this on the front. So once again, we take the Agaros dunes, just load up the brush and just paint this all over. the fur, like that, wash the brush, then grab some wildwood, and just add some of it towards the middle, or wherever you like really. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Basilicarnum Grey. I'm going to use this to colour in the beards. Just like that. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some thinned down iron warriors. We're going to use this to paint in all of the silver details. So this is areas like his armor, his belt buckle, and of course, these massive axe blades. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to make a roughly three parts Creed camo to one part Gilman flesh to one part contrast medium mix. And this is going to be for all of his skin. And this was going to give us a lovely kind of pallid, fleshy green. Over the top of our grey here. I don't worry if it's a little too weak for your tastes. We are going to add a lot more kind of colour and greenness into it, but this is just going to act as our base for all of the extra stuff that we're going to put over the top. But right now, that looks pretty awesome. <laughs> And so with that done, you should have two Kosagi Night Guard who look somewhat like this. They're looking pretty awesome. So what we're going to do, just before we kind of work on all of the kind of layering up of that skin and all the highlights and stuff, we've just got one little area left to do, and that is their axe hafts. Hafts. The, the handles of their weapons. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to use these three colours. We've got Agaros Dunes, Saigor Brown, and contrast medium open. What we want to do first is we want to take Agaros Dunes. We want to paint this over the entirety of the axe handle. Just like this. And do not be shy about the amount that you're using.
like that. Then what we do is we grab some Saigal Brown and from the base of it, we add this Saigal Brown whilst it's still wet up to about that sort of distance. Wash the brush, grab a little bit of contrast medium and just paint it over the Like this, all the way up to the top. Like that. And it kind of just blends the two together. And then what we can do is grab just a little bit of Saigal Brown, tiny amount at the top here. Again, just add it like that. Wash the brush. Grab some contrast medium. And once again, just pull it down a bit like that. So you get this kind of fade from the really dark all the way up and then back to being dark towards the base where it's being held in the, in the hand. And then we do the same thing on the other side. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some iron hand steel. We're going to use this to paint in the cutting edge of the blade. Now just try and avoid anywhere where there's the kind of the pitted nature of it. But it doesn't matter too much if you do get any of this in there. But basically what we're after is we're after two, a couple of different tones in there before we do any of the shading. So you'll see that you've got the darker through to the lighter cutting edge of that blade, like that. And we just want to do it on this side as well. Just like that. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is shade all of our metallics. So what you may notice here is I've got Fire Slayer Flesh, Contrast Medium and Basilicanum Grey all open. And the reason for this is because we're making two mixes. We're making a one-to-one -one of Contrast Medium and Basilicanum Grey and a one-to-one -one of Fire Slayer Flesh and Contrast Medium. And this is because we want lots and lots of controllers with doing this. Because what we're going to do first is we're going to take some Basilicanum Grey, some of this Basilicanum Grey mix. I'm going to paint this all over our me metallics like so I'm gonna move reasonably quickly here There we go. And then whilst that's still wet, we want to wash the brush. We want to grab some of our Fire Slayer Flesh mix. And we want to add little patches of rust. Along that cutting edge of the blade, just like that. I've actually got a little too much on this. What I'm going to do is just take the excess off using my brush. Just absorb some of it. And 
redistribute it around like that. And you just want to repeat this process on the back. Like that. And so, what we can do now is do this sort of thing across over all of our metallics. So again, adding the basilicanum grey contrast medium mix here. On the shoulder pad. Like so. Washing the brush, I'm grabbing a little bit of our fire slayer flesh. Just adding a little bit of it in as well, like that. Just mop that little bit there. Just like this. So you want to go over all of your silver, just like that, and then we'll come back. And with that done, it's now time to start adding some highlights. So we're going to go way back to the beginning. I'm going to start on all of that very dark red. So the color that we're going to be using for this is Wazdaka Red. And all we want to do with this is we just want to start picking out all of our edges. Just like this. And with that Wazdaka red applied to both of our red coats, what we're now going to do is take some thin down squig orange. I'm going to use this as a little bit of a spot highlight, just picking out the sharpest areas in our coats. Just like this. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Dawnstone and we're going to use this to highlight our brown just by picking out the sharpest points in the in the leather. Like that, similarly around the cuff. Just like that. What we can also do is use this to highlight our black details as well. And with that done, what we're now gonna do is we're gonna take some iron hand steel and we're gonna use this to highlight all of our silver details. You can also use this to paint in the buttons. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to take some Volupus pink and we're going to use this on some of the skin areas. And firstly, what we want to do is we want to any holes in their skin, you just want to add a little bit of this Volupus pink, like so. So this is to kind of represent the grossness underneath. What we also want to do is we want to use this all around their gums.
and their eyes. like that. Simply on the back here. A little bit of lupus pink to put in here. And similarly on this hand. And with that done, what we now want to do is we want to take some Screaming Skull we want to use this to colour in their teeth. And their fingernails. And with that Screaming Skull applied, what we then want to do is take some Nasdrag Yellow. We want to paint this over the top. of our teeth and fingernails. And so with that done, what we now want to do is take some Gorse Blaster Green. We want to use this to pick out all of the edges in all of our skin. Just like that. With that Gorse Blaster Green applied, what we then do is take a tiny amount of Pallid Witch Flesh. We just use this to act as our little spot highlight on the sharpest points on all of our skin. Just like that. And in a very similar vein, what we want to do is we want to take a tiny amount of full grim pink. Just want a little spot highlight. Picking out the sharpest areas in all those areas that you'll have added some full uh, volupus pink to. Just like that. So with that done, our Kosagi Night Guard are very, very close to completion. All that's left to do is to add a little bit of a highlight to the axe handles and to the fur. And the way we're going to do this is with a very, very gentle dry brush of Screaming Skull. We don't need to do all of the fur, just enough that there's a little bit more variation. The reason we're doing it as a dry brush is we want it to be quite a soft highlight. If we brush it on, it'll look a little bit too clean. Similarly on the axe haft, Just want to add a tiny small amount of this Screaming Skull dry brush towards the middle. Like that. Same on the back. And so with that done, our Kosaki Night Guard are finished. And they look suitably disgraceful. <laughs> so all that's left to do is their bases. Now I'm not going to cover how to do the bases as we've already covered how to do them in uh, 
well, for various different things. So Torgilius, the knight, uh, the chamberlain, we've shown how to paint these rats uh, for the right, wide open bases. We've done it in Captain Imelda Braskov and the Jelson Darok video. So if you'd like to see how I'm going to do that, you can check out those videos. Or alternatively, you can simply follow your own scheme of however you've decided to paint your cursed city sets. I've gone ahead and I've finished off those bases in the same style as Captain Imelda Braskov and Jelson Darek, and I think the final result is stunning. I love the Kasagi Night Guard, I really do. They're, I think they're the most underrated miniatures from the box. You see, they kind of, they're very much embody the Soul Blight curse to me. You see, from afar they look like just kind of normal big dudes, well, big ogre orky things, but um, from a distance they look fairly normal and then you get up close and you notice just kind of that kind of rotten deathly pallor and also just the kind of the peeling skin and all that kind of stuff and you realize there's something really not right with these guys and I think that's perfect. If you enjoyed this video, you love the channel and you'd like to support me further like these legends and bosses that you can see on the screen before you, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to share it, like it, comment on it, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And to make sure you stay up to date, don't forget to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon in the next one. Happy Wargaming.